Good afternoon, friends, and welcome back for COVID Community Conversation. Thank you for watching. This is the 14th conversation since we began just over a month ago. Today's conversation focuses on one of the cornerstones of my administration and one of our top three priorities, economic development. For the past three years, we have, had, we have, we have put a concentrated effort on, effort on strengthening our business community and bringing in, in new development who literally helped to change the landscape of our great city. Let me take this time to shout out to the Mayor's Office of Economic Development, Invest Aurora, and the Chambers of Commerce for their stalwart effort with our business community and all the business owners and managers who have brought new enterprises to Aurora over the past three years. These are certainly challenging times with COVID-19, we all know that. And I thank all of you for staying the course as, as we plan to reopen our economy in, the safe, in a safe and scientific way. In fact, just this morning, we launched a business survey to seek advice from our business community about the reopening process. You can find the survey on the city's social media platform and the homepage of our website. Now, with that being said, we have some of the, those major developers here with us today. And these are the heavy hitters, the guys that are making, guys and ladies that are making it happen. And when I say major, I'm talking about those who are investing millions of dollars in the city of Aurora. In this case, collectively, these developers or the people that you see on the screen are investing more than $200 million in the city. Let me say that one more time because I, yeah, I don't even know if I said that right. $200 million, yep, I said it right, dollars in the city of Aurora. They are leading the way with new commercial, residential, and mixed-use developments throughout our city and redeveloping properties that have sat vacant for decades. In some cases, you know, 60 years vacant, but they're redeveloping, bringing it back to life. Just so we can all get to know them a little better, I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. I'll briefly say what their names are, and then I'll call on you individually so you can say who you are and what you're about. We got my buddy Mike Pulakitis, a lawyer buddy of mine. Me and him go way back. Russ Warman, his partner. Um, Crystal Zhang, um, and she'll talk about what she's got going on. Pacifica Square, I love your background. That looks very zen back there. You know, I wish I was hanging out where you're hanging out. We got uh, Jeffrey Arduno. You know, my Rockford, my Rockford buddies there. Then we got Harish, Anantha Padmanabhan, and Jay uh, Punukalu. You know, I, I worked hard on that, that name, brother. I had to break it down in syllables, but I, I got it. Anantha Padmanabhan. So I will, I'll talk to you guys individually. You know, I'll, I'll ask you to introduce yourselves individually and what you're doing for the city of Aurora so everybody knows you like I know you. We'll go ahead and start with ladies first. Crystal. No. Oh. Thanks for having me today, uh, Mayor. Really glad to see you back and to see everybody all working on the projects and to make Aurora a better city and the city of light and you know the best city in, in, uh, in Illinois. Absolutely. So I'm an architect and on behalf of a Winfield Group and we're happy to be part of the community in Aurora to bring in some Asian flavors to um, um, uh, Route 59 commercial corridor. So if you guys know the city pretty well, we have the best in the Fox Valley Mall, brings in billions of dollars and, and every year for the city of Aurora. And we want to be part of that golden corridor and to bring in a Asian flavor we call the Asian Cool Pacific Square on north corner of the um, Fox Valley Mall. It's on the corner of 59 and uh, um, New York Street. So with the existing 360,000 square feet of uh, um, what we call the phase one, and that was a 50% vacant um, retail space. And we bring in more, um, you know, diversify program was in the shopping and the dining, uh, was entertainment, recreational and service and into this, the uh, this um, lifestyle center. And the, uh, potentially we also looking for uh, propose a program was in the professional office or potential was in, um, you know, more retails and uh, residential or hotel that's uh, in the play. We, we're we still working with the city for that. The current phase of the uh, Pacific Square is a, um, the renovation of the existing mall, which you turned into the half vacant of the mall into a vibrant um, pedestrian friendly uh, with a, a lot of, uh, um, uh, with a, first of all, the anchor store will be an Asian supermarket is 50,000 square feet, which is one of the, uh, the biggest 
Asian supermarket in the Midwest. Um, we looking into probably be open um, in late June or early July because the delay due to COVID-19. And uh, some of the restaurants are already open like Far Station and uh, was the uh, uh, Vivi Bubble Tea is partially open. I was there two weeks ago and they have the uh, uh, very sanitized area with a window for opening um, um, pick up and uh, carry, uh, carry a business, which is I love to see that. And some of the uh, restaurant actually was open and had to close, like the hot pot, like the uh, um, barbecue. It's more, um, you know, and with the KTV, is more like you know have to limit it with the ten people um, and less. And you know, we're probably thinking about opening in June, but uh, um, and at the very promising um, restaurant and the new restaurant and. And the new program we bring into this project and we can see that um, we bring in this some um, Asian flavor and with this uh, Pacific Square want to not enhance the culture uh, diversity of the city of Aurora also want to bring in more the diversity to the general public and for the people of Aurora. Absolutely. Crystal, you are, are singing my song, actually. And, you know, you you um, you had a lot to say about, you know, a Asian cool, you know, and, and we're looking we're looking forward to getting it started. But I think you're being a little bit modest. Not this isn't just going to be a regular, you know, Asian cool or, you know, um, uh, type of environment. This will be the largest Asian uh, development of its kind in the United States of America in the whole country right here in the city of Aurora. Isn't that right, Crystal? Yes, it is. And it, with the future faces, it definitely our vision is to become one of the, not the, like the mayor said, I not being modest and we're trying to um, <laughs> taking the time with the COVID and see how we're going to do with the future development. De right, definitely, right. that's our vision. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I look forward to that vision coming to reality. And anything we can do to continue to support that, we're all on top of it. But that fair out by the Fox Valley Mall is going to bring millions and millions of dollars and visitors as, you know, as a destination location. We look forward to it. Let's go to really Jeff. Appreciate you, Mayor. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Let's go to Jeff. What's going on there, brother? How you doing? I'm well, Mayor. Good to Good see you. See. Good to see you, man. So, hey, uh, we're here at Urban Equity Properties out of Rockford, and we are working on the Keystone and Terminal buildings. Urban, Equ Urban Equity is the leading uh, historic rehabilitation company in Illinois. We're building mixed-use properties, uh, basically taking the top floors of those buildings and turning them into loft apartments, uh, luxury loft apartments, and taking the ground floors. Uh, we have great retail tenants at Keystone and at Terminal. We are uh, turning the ground floor into a restaurant. So that's something exciting for downtown. As far as my background, which I understand Clayton want us to talk to, uh, I've been the CEO, I'm sorry, not the CEO, the COO and the chief legal officer at uh, Urban Equity for about four years. And before that was a private practice attorney. Wow. Now, I had said that some of our buildings have said empty for up to 60 years. The building that you're working on, the terminal building, has sat empty in its upper floors for 60 years. The lights haven't come on in that building in 60 years. And you guys that came in and, you know, less than uh, 16 months, you know, uh, are, are, are going to see that be a vibrant new state in Maine right there in, in the middle of our, of our downtown where we have new apartments and a restaurant on the first floor. Is that right? That's right. We're, uh, we'll have 20 loft apartments and uh, ideally speaking, a wood fire brick oven pizza on the ground floor. Absolutely. So we're pumped. And that's, in. Just, and that's just one building because you guys are all in. You guys said, all right, look, mm -hmm. I got one building, but there's a whole other building that, you know, we want to uh, we want to invest in. And that's the ter that's the uh, the Keystone building. Yeah. Yeah. So we figured uh, we double down on Aurora. We had such a good experience with your team. Uh, to their credit, Dave Debo, Marty Lyons, uh, Rich Veenstra, the whole crew, um, all of the Alexes, all of the different Alexes. You've got a lot of good Alexes. We got a lot of good so, Alexes. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we had such a good experience uh, on working on Lofts on Broadway. We figured we would uh, kind of go all in. Absolutely. Now, just to give people a, a perspective, how, when, what year was uh, the Keystone built? Oh, boy. Uh, you're quizzing me here. I would say probably in the 1930s. Could be right. wrong. Right, right. Early, early. You know, matter of fact, mm -hmm. they started in 1922 in that one. And I think the terminal See? is even older than that, you know, over 100 years right. old. And it's sat right. empty. Exactly. Sat empty for, for 60 years. So we, we look forward to those uh, developments getting done. 
you know, sometime later this year. I understand that, you know, COVID, like with all of us, has set us back, but only a few months for you guys, and we're back on track and ready to roll, huh? That's right, Mayor. Thank you. Oh, looking forward to it, brother. Looking forward to it. Now let's go to some some tag teams. We've got Harish and Jay. Um, we'll start with Harish, and uh, we'll jump over to Jay, which is your which is your partner. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it, and uh, really uh, good job on pronouncing my last name. You <laughs> uh, actually struggle with it, but you did an awesome job. So thank you. Hey, thank you, brother. Thank you. For people who cannot pronounce my last name, I also go by Harish Naidu, which is much easier. Uh, but uh, yeah, thanks again. So just to give a brief background about myself. So um, originally from India, came to the US in the year 2000 uh, to do my master's with uh, two suitcases and uh, $5,000. And then uh, obviously I believe that US is a land of opportunities and I'm really thankful to where, I'm, uh, to where, where, where we are. Uh, got into Aurora in 2007 and that's been my home city since then. Uh, been uh, really uh, following Aurora like a hawk since then, since I moved in. And I've watched all the you know downtown um, development. So basically, uh, we're concentrating more on downtown. So I've been watching it for a while. So I made a first investment in 2014, um, which currently is a U Samba restaurant in, uh, on New York Street. And then after that, um, so far, we have uh, been involved in 11 buildings covering 130,000 square feet of area in, in prime downtown. Uh, big believers of downtown and, you know, there's a saying, right, put your money where your mouth is. So that's what we're doing. Uh, also involved in uh, an IT company um, in uh, data science, machine learning, and uh, it's called APS Data Technologies, as well as uh, have a run a non-for-profit institution called APS Training Institute to provide uh, cutting edge technology training to the underserved for free. So that is something we're planning to kick off as well in, in the fall of this year. Beautiful. Now, before we get into your individual projects that you know are gonna change the face of how, as, uh, help with changing the face of how downtown lurks, looks, let's go to your partner, Jay. What's going on, Jay? How are you, Mayor? Thanks I'm for just having me. Um, I'm Jay Pinacolu. I've been a business owner since 2003. Uh, started out, you know, with a technology company, um, and then got into retail, uh, gas stations, um, own different verticals uh, in the quick service, fast casual space as well. Got into Aurora, um, you know, Harish and I have been friends for a long time, and then um, kind of got into Aurora through him. And when we got in, you know, when I, you know, first drove around Aurora, Aurora look at the infrastructure and you, you feel like there's so much potential, but it, it just was kind of, uh, just seemed that it was kind of a depressed state in 2014, 2015. Since then, I mean, as all of you guys know, it's come up leaps and bounds and there's a, a lot of, you know, amazing projects that's, uh, that are going on. Um, and we're happy to be involved um, with some of the key developments there. We've, uh, um, acquired a few projects that are going to be landmarks um, by Maine and Maine. And I think our Keystone project is going to be the Hobbs redevelopment, um, which I guess we're, we're going to be talking about here soon. And, and let me just briefly go over that. So there's, you, you have a number of buildings, as you pointed out, but two that, that, are, um, that are on the way right now, the old bank building, which is on Broadway. Now, do you know, for example, what year that one was built? Because I know that one's it, 1926. 1926. You know, so that building already is, is uh, has uh, businesses in it. Matter of fact, you attracted a business from from Naperville. Is that correct? That does about seven hundred million dollars a year. That, that's absolutely right. So they basically turned over eight hundred fifty million dollars. Their headquarters is uh, in California, and they had an office in Naperville. And uh, we were successfully we were, we were able to bring them to downtown Aurora. Absolutely, glad. Thanks for that. And that's in the that's in the bank building, which is going to be primarily commercial, well, all commercial. And then we have the iconic Hobbs building. Jay, you talk a little bit about uh, the, the the Hobbs. You guys are um, you in partnership with uh, other developers are making that happen, right? Right. So we actually acquired Six North and Twelve North River buildings a couple of years ago. Uh, when it started out, our vision was to kind of redevelop those two buildings, but then we kind of incorporated the Hobbs building as a part of that huge development. And we're uh, super excited about that project. I think uh, 
you know, the, the, our vision is to have 31 upscale lofts, um, you know, on, you know, floors two, three, and four at the Hops building, and then, you know, um, have three restaurant, high-end uh, restaurants um, at, on the retail level. We've been gotcha. um, talking to a couple of uh, concepts already pre-COVID. Uh, they're still interested, which is super exciting. Uh, so we'll have more news um, in the next uh, few weeks to months. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. We'll come back to you in a few minutes. Now, let's go on to my brothers down there, uh, Russ and Mike, the partners. I'll start out with uh, Russ Warman and have him introduce himself. Then we'll go to Mike and we'll talk about your projects you got going on, Aurora. What's going on, Russ? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I You're appreciate welcome. you uh, setting this up for us. Absolutely. My name is uh, Russ Warman. I'm part of Fox Valley Developers, Metro West Developers, and a, uh, a contracting company called KWCC. I've been in Aurora pretty much my whole life since 1987. Uh, very proud to be in Aurora, very proud, proud to be a part of everything that's going on. Uh, we're involved with uh, Copley Hospital, East Aurora School District, uh, Esser Lofts, and a couple other things that are coming up, but we're very excited to be here and I appreciate the opportunity. Now, um, before we go on to your partner here, which was probably say the same thing, you guys met each other because you actually went to high school in Aurora. Isn't that right? Yeah, the Fox Valley Developer Partnerships, all of our graduates of Wabonzi Valley, we're all brothers. So it's uh, three sets of brothers <laughs> that are very eager to uh, uh, get stuff done. Now, hey, I appreciate the Warriors, brother. I, I do, man. Now, you know me. I'm a Tomcat through and through, brother. And I appreciate some of the work you're doing in con uh, Tomcat country. And we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, we'll let we'll let the Warriors on the screen today. Just for today, though. I'll, you know, <laughs> my comments to myself about that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go on to your partner, Mike. What's going on, my man? Hey, Mayor. Thank you uh, for having us. I, I do have to start out. I'll, I'll segue that into saying I am 100% Greek. Uh, but my blood is green and gold for Wamanzi Valley Warriors. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, you know, my family has been in the Aurora area since the ninth, since the, actually since 1974. Uh, my dad's been in business. Uh, I uh, graduated law school in in uh, 1998 and decided to uh, set up shop. That's of course soon thereafter. Mayor is when we had. Uh, met and we're friendly adversaries, uh, you at the state's attorney's office and me at public practice or private practice. So uh, I've been practicing attorney since 98. Um, shortly thereafter, opened up our first restaurant in Aurora, O'Malley's. Um, I'm actually partners with uh, Russ Warman's brother, Ron, in O'Malley's. And um, let's give Ron a shout out, my brother, Ron. <laughs> in, uh, in, uh, in 2016, uh, Russ's uh, construction company built out Spartan House for us, and we've been open ever since, um, navigating through obviously COVID, as is everybody else. Uh, but then I've also been involved in, um, you know, mostly residential uh, real estate, but definitely some commercial. And uh, now we've expanded that with uh, with uh, Fox Valley Developers and Metro West into uh, what is going to be the old Copley redevelopment and the uh, 80 South River. Uh, development, which is uh, mixed use of commercial on space on the on the first floor, and uh, residential on the second. So, all right. So wait a minute, brother. You you Very glossed nice. over you glossed over that kind of quick that that whole that Copley thing. Hold <laughs> on, but because it that's that's a huge huge development, not just for the city of Aurora, but for the east side in particular. Now, I, I I'll say that there hasn't been any major development in District 131, man, in, in close to a generation. You know, maybe maybe longer. And this is the first large development of its of its kind on the east side of Aurora, and it's reusing an old, a former Copley Hospital. I was born at Copley Hospital. This this building has been this structure, not just one structure. There's a number of them out. This campus has been uh, empty for a quarter of a century, yeah. and many people have tried and talked about it, but you guys stepped up and are making it happen. And there's uh, one particular. Uh, the, part of the development that that uh, the east side really likes talk a little bit about a little bit about that russ go ahead which, which, uh, which so right now we're under construction with the east aurora school district they're moving in here say we, that one uh, more time say that one more time brother <laughs> we are under construction <laughs> <laughs> east aurora uh, school district warriors in the house <laughs> that's right <laughs> I'm not sure it'll stand, but we'll get it done. <laughs> um, 
So we broke ground and we got the foundation in for the addition and uh, the boardroom's going up. The exterior brick is is under uh, construction now. We're almost done with that. The roof is being completed hopefully next week. On the inside, uh, we're drywalling, finishing up electric and everything is running 100% uh, smooth. We had a little hiccups because of COVID with um, some of the HVAC products, but we're working that out in our elevators just because they've cut down productions. Mm -hmm. But uh, we monitor that every day, and we're going to do whatever it takes to make it happen. So Absolutely. everything is moving smoothly with that. We also uh, have plans set out for the uh, uh, senior living. That's 121 units of senior living. Uh, I'm sorry, 98. And um, so that's been sent out to bid. We got pricing back in for that, so we're moving along with that. We're proud to say that uh, hopefully either this afternoon or tomorrow, building uh, 8.2, that would be the uh, adults with autism. That building will be going out to bid and, and getting pricing for that and get that in the schedule. So uh, things are moving very well here. ComEd has been out. They've uh, pulled all their underground piping so they can bring in all their new under, uh, infrastructure in. Um, Com, Comcast has done the same with their fiber optics. So everything is moving uh, very well out here except with the weather. If it would stop raining for a little bit. It would probably help too. Got you, got you, got you. Now, let me just ask one more question, and Mike, answer this question. The, uh, Russ just said you've got senior living, you've got a, a space uh, living with adults with autism, as well as a school district and other things on there. Does this exist anywhere in Illinois, this, this, this idea that you guys have? It, it, it's very cutting edge. You know, obviously, when we took this building, it was over 300,000 square feet. We've cut it down to 240,000 square feet. Uh, it was nine buildings. It's now going to be seven. Uh, and as like Russ, as Russ had said, the, the mix between senior living and uh, adults with disabilities that have uh, that have cognitive and developmental disabilities with low support needs, um, this is very cutting edge, and it's a new model that's that's growing across the country. And what we've done is because the facility was so big, is with our team of experts, what we've decided to do would, was to combine the aging population with the adults with disability uh, because as these segments get older, there's nowhere for them to go. And so you could imagine in one facility, you could have the parents of an adult with, dis uh, with a disabled child living in the facility. And then in the other side of the building, it would be their adult living independently, which is a key, living independently. These exactly. are children. These, adult, these adults with disabilities would be living independent lives. Uh, now, it's not a solution for everybody. We like to make that clear, but it's, a, it's an exciting solution for those kids who can live or adults that can live independent. And uh, we're very excited to bring uh, not only that, but we also have LOIs with an urgent care. So we're bringing medical use back to that area. Uh, it's been a desert, as we've discussed many times, uh, along with a... Um, uh, along with a physical therapy uh, service provider and a uh, family counseling service provider. Beautiful. Uh, and then there's also plans in the works for a sm uh, small pharmacy okay. in, in the building that was originally built in 1888. Wow, because that building, that, that project, that building, some parts of it goes back to the 1800s, the first ever hospital in the city of Aurora. And Correct. you guys are working on it working on it and you know let, let's go to let's go to crystal for a second let me ask you a question crystal yeah. you know and you can answer for yourself and i know mr eddie knee who uh is the the lead developer on that and his daughter judy as well as you i talk to on a regular basis mm -hmm. people I, I think our our, our viewers want to know why aurora i mean you could have gone anywhere to build the largest asian you know themed uh, uh area the way that you're building it a uh, development why aurora well, um, Eddie, me, like in mayor, you mentioned that Eddie and Judy, the group is called the Winfall Group. We're looking for the opportunities to bring in this um, Asian cool, the Asian uh, lifestyle center and somewhere in Illinois for sure. And uh, we actually had this uh, vision for a couple of years and I think and even then back in 2013, Eddie was looking at um, area in Aurora because not only uh, the population was the Asian uh, population and also in the economical uh, environment, the city of Aurora supporting us and from the mayor and from your team and the building and the zoning and everybody in 
and the uh, uh, you know financial department and uh, Miss Devo and uh, Marty and Trevor, everybody like when we going through and the talking to the city official and before we signing the deal. And you know, um, the, to buy this and big and you know, uh, 40, 50 percent vacant um, property, I think is uh, uh, with the cities and the support that doesn't make us and uh, want to uh, make this like the pilot project for uh, the first Asian lifestyle uh, in Aurora. That's the reason. Thank you, wow. Mayor. Absolutely, my pleasure. And um, Aurora's open for business. So when you guys came knocking on the door, you said, absolutely, we'd like to have your development here in, in the city of Aurora. Jeff, you know, you guys uh, did a lot of development. Most of your development, your beginnings were out in Rockford. Matter of fact, mayor out there is a good buddy of mine. We're on a number of uh, boards together. And uh, when I first became mayor, I think, man, I had only been a mayor for like maybe one or two weeks when I first met you. And you guys, you know, we, we heard what you were doing out in Rockford. And we was like, man, we would love to have that happen in Aurora because Rockford, very similar to Aurora, is a river city, you know, with a lot of old uh, infrastructure. But why did you guys eventually decide on Aurora? What, what about Aurora? There's a handful of reasons, Mayor, and uh, thanks for the shout out to Mayor McNamara here. I'll pass that so, along to him. <laughs> so, hey, we, we view Aurora a lot like Rockford is a city with a lot of potential. Uh, I think Aurora has a uh, it may be a geographic advantage somewhat in proximity to the city. Rockford has kind of a logistical hub advantage, but we view, view both of them as being uh, geographically blessed in one way or another. Uh, we think Aurora has great energy. Uh, we think that there's a baseline in Aurora that, because it's hard to be at the bleeding edge, to be the first entity to come in and just start doing things downtown. You can do it, but it's, that's a lot of work. Here, I feel like there had been a great baseline, or Aurora, I felt like there had been a great baseline of, uh, for example, all the storefronts in uh, Keystone that had been there, some good restaurants downtown, things that, and people who were passionate about, about downtown, uh, like Marissa, you know, and, and then you look at that, yeah, exactly, and you mm -hmm. look at these people, and they've created kind of a baseline and helped build that energy to where folks like all of us can come in and move forward from that baseline that they built then uh, finally, I would say you have a great team. I'll say it again. <laughs> I'm not trying to uh, be flattering. I'm truly telling you, you have a team that shows that Aurora is open for business. Your team, and I mean this across the board, we've interacted obviously some with more departments uh, or more with some departments than others. But when you look across the entire spectrum, you've got pros in every position, people who would be rock stars in their own rights um, from everything, even positions that other cities don't have, public art, uh, a chief information officer. You have rock stars in those positions. You've got Debo and Lyons. You've got John Curley. You know, the list goes on. You've got, you know, a bench and a roster a mile deep. And we have had consistently great interactions across every department. So it, they've made it easy to do business in Aurora and to want to do more business in Aurora. Well, I'm glad to hear it, brother. We've got a, a, an amazing team, a rock star team, and pull them together and empowering them to do what needs to get done to show that we're open for business and to bring folks like you with million dollar players into the city to do the development that, you know, that's been a blessing. That has been. Now, Harish, you said you moved into the city and you actually live in Aurora. You know, why did you choose Aurora initially? And, and, and what about the downtown made you say, hey, I'm going to go down there and start investing in buildings? Okay. <laughs> Um, so I came here when I moved. I was actually in downtown Chicago. I was working there and then I got a job at uh, uh, Office Max from before. They used to have their corporate office in, on Deal Road. So that's when I moved to Aurora because it was 10 minutes away versus an hour and a half uh, commuting, driving from downtown. So that's the reason why I came to Aurora. Uh, and then why I came to downtown Aurora is uh, I'm also a poker player. So we had a casino. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it like it is, brother. I was yeah. down at the boat, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, that's how I came to downtown Aurora. And as soon as I came there, I was just impressed in terms of I'm like, oh my God, we have such a beautiful in a downtown area with the river flowing through. And so that's that's what you know, brought my interest in. And I that's when I dug deeper okay, I mean, obviously, you know, there are a lot of buildings that were, that were available, which were, was an opportunity for us, right? So from our perspective, it was more of, okay, how can we make use of this opportunity and identify the key buildings? And that's how it started uh, back in 2007, 2014. 
but the, the, the turning point came in 2018. Uh, you know, uh, we all know why. And uh, I think uh, Jeff uh, mentioned about your, yourself, your rock star team and everything. So that's when I felt that I need to reach out to Jay, who uh, was uh, you know, in the restaurant industry. And I said, okay, this is an opportunity where the, the, the city is also open for business and they have a rock solid team to uh, you know, help us with, uh, with, our, with our achieving our dreams. So in a long story short, that's, that's the progression since uh, 2007 to, to today. So you came downtown and you just fell in love with what you saw, huh? The uh, architecture absolutely. and infrastructure. Uh, and without putting, uh, putting down any, any other cities, right? I mean, other cities have creeks. We have a river. So, <laughs> yes, we do. The heart of our city, brother. And as you pointed out, you've bought, you know, a number of buildings, 11 buildings that you own. So that means when you were down here and you first saw it, these buildings were empty and people owned them, but they were doing nothing. And, and you, they were available and they had been available for decades. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah, that's when, you know, 2018 was our first acquisition uh, as, a, as, as JH was uh, 6 and 12 North River. Yeah. Now we're doing the whole Hobbs redevelopment project. So Hobbs was 1892. 1892. Wow. Built. Wow. Wow. So Jay, I mean, did you just come to Aurora because your buddy says, hey, this is the place to be? Or did you come check it out yourself and and see that it was a place that maybe you'd be willing to invest in? No, like um, uh, like, uh, Harish was saying, the the infrastructure, the the architecture that, that was out there is one thing, the beautiful landscape with the river and and you look at some of the you know neighboring towns like St. Charles, Geneva, Batavia, along the Fox River. They've kind of developed over the years. Um, I think it just you you know, and, and then just not to mention that, but the the demographic, you know, the diversity that Aurora has to offer. I think that's a huge, huge plus because you know we can always you know we can kind of stimulate the economy some where you know it could be you know. Um, uh, just come in and start developing and so on and so forth. But then if there isn't, you know, the demographic that's going to actually make use of the facilities or, you know, the biz to support the businesses and such, it's, it's a moot point. And I think there's the population density is one thing, but diversity is a whole different ball game, which is going to be a huge plus, you know, no matter who comes in and does business in Aurora. And that's one of the main reasons why we actually wanted to come in and, and, and take an active role to kind of revitalize downtown. And, you know, I'm going to actually piggyback on everyone else and say that your team mayor, um, you know, start every department has been super supportive. And I think that, you know, goes a long way. Um, you know, when we actually, you know, acquired the first couple of buildings um, and, you know, and how supportive, you know, the economic development team and everyone else were, uh, that's when we wanted to actually go all in. And, Kind of make more aggressive moves to acquire some of the other properties and such. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, uh, Russ and Mike, I'll go to you guys. You know, and I and I know, you know, Mike, I'll start with you. You guys went to uh, went to high school here, Warriors. You know, but 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 why were you willing? Why were you willing to say, hey, you know, I mean, Aurora, you, you had been here going to high school here. You'd been here the whole time. Why now? Why do you say I think I want to invest in Aurora? You, you know, Mayor, for us, it comes down to the fact that um, we've been in this area for our whole, most of our whole lives, at least our adult, most of our adult lives. And for Russ and for me, my, most of my whole life. And so, um, you, you know, I, I tell this story to some people is when I decided to go in business, I, I could have gone from, from Route 59, I could have either gone north or, or south. Uh, and I thought I could have the biggest impact come, coming to Aurora. Uh, and helping to effectuate change and, you know, slowly meeting and developing relationships with others who uh, can effectuate change, right? And I think that's what uh, caught my eye with you. The first time I met you 20 years ago, you back then when you were a state's attorney trying to make a, a, a change uh, with the youth, uh, right. trying to make a change uh, for the better uh, from way back then. Uh, and so uh, I always wanted to be a part of that. And I think it was just a matter of when was the right time. And I've, all, we've all, I've always had business in Aurora. So I always knew the benefits of that. But now to make such big change um, is, is simply because of the leadership, right? It, it starts from you and on down. Uh, so I won't keep, I won't 
be redundant, I, I, but I, I support everything that everyone has said as far as your team is concerned. Um, and the ability to give back. Um, I do have to throw a plug in for the fundraiser that Russ and I do, you know, giving back to the community. Um, we've, you know, we've supported Hesset House over the last uh, almost 15 years now, uh, raising, you know, over oh, close to $100,000 a year for them at our Christmas fundraiser. So we, we love to give back. We love to be with meet people that love to give back. And I think that's why Harish and, and Jay and us have become friends. That's why I, I got such a great sense uh, from Jeff when I met him and uh, from the Knee family, uh, how welcoming that family is. It's unbelievable. It's absolutely, it's unbelievable. And it gives you goosebumps to be associated with such people that are so real and who want to truly effectuate change. Absolutely. Now, now, Russ, brother, you, and, and you didn't tell your whole story either, man. You own a, um, a business that does, uh, does, does work throughout the country. Is that correct? Working with, working with a, a large, um, is, is it Menards? Yeah, we do work for Menards and we've done yeah. it for other big box retailers. Right, right. Big, yeah. We are throughout the country as far as uh, Virginia and as far west as uh, Gillette, Wyoming. Wow. Uh, we, we have tools and we do travel, but um, we uh, <laughs> love <laughs> It's like I have a gun, I tra have gun, yeah. we'll travel, right? <laughs> We, uh, I, I love being in Aurora. You know, my dad worked at Caterpillar and that's how I got up here and uh, just seeing Aurora grow and, you know, try to make changes for the better for Aurora is a, is a good thing. And then being a contractor just on the, the two sites that we have now, Copley and uh, 80 South, you know, we're close to, with subcontractors, 200 men and women right now working today. Wow. So, uh, wow. Which is awesome for Aurora, you know, and we're buying materials, you know, we're getting all our gravel from uh, locally Geneva construction. We're getting all our plumbing from Meyer plumbing. So, um, you know, we're trying to support Aurora, trying to make it, you know, our city. And, you know, that's why I love it because there's, there's so much support here for people like us that come here and, and do development that uh, people want to see it happen. They don't just want to do business. They want to make it happen and do business. So Rob, that's, that's why I'm here, 100%. Hey, man, I'm glad to hear, it, brother. I'm glad to have you guys here. And, and I think you guys just being here talking today lets our, our citizens know that Aurora is still open for business. Now, Rush, you said something a few seconds ago. You say we have 200 people that are working today, both on you have a downtown property you're working on, which are going to be called Esther Loss in its completion, as well as the, the Copley. And, you know, we've got so many things going on. Uh, you know, how has COVID and I'll start with 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 Harish. How is how is how is COVID set you guys back? And you're we're still open for business. We're still doing things. And even though this COVID, you know, a crisis, the pandemic throughout the world has affected you, you guys are still working and making it happen. How has COVID really affected you at, at all, Harish? So, uh, and uh, absolutely right. I mean, uh, this is something that we have not seen maybe even more, for more than a hundred years ago. So this is nobody has the right answers for uh, how to deal with it, other than you know try to stay safe and uh, do you know employ social distancing. So this was something that you know we since we have not encountered, we had to be careful, right? At the same time, we also had to deliver on uh, our schedules. So. From that perspective, we kind of very, uh, 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 you know, kind of intuitively changed certain things where we did a lot more of the non-core construction part during this time and then spaced out the core construction accordingly, right? So that we still are able to meet our schedule, but at the same time, we're not, we're, the clock is still ticking and we're still all, the team is still doing their work. Absolutely. So we're trying to exercise that, you know, the caution as well as also moving moving forward, right? In, in a way where our, our, our schedules are not, uh, we're not able to keep up with it or anything like that. So we're making sure that we deliver uh, as, as, as we promised. But Jay, do you wanna add on to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just gonna second that thought. As far as uh, some of our other properties, we, you know, uh, we had a bunch of rehab that was ongoing. So it didn't really put a dent in any of that process as far as the Hobbs construction is concerned. Uh, most of the structural, you know, um, rehab or enhancements were actually done pre-COVID, which was actually great for us. The masonry part was actually complete as well. Uh, now we're actually kind of um, still trying to, you know, uh, you know, uh, we're in for permits right now, 
uh, and we're actually on track with timelines and so on and so forth. Um, so from, from a development standpoint, it really hasn't set us back as much, but obviously everyone is aware of the other challenges in terms of, you know, some of our retail tenants, you know, kind of uh, shutting down their businesses and such. And we had to kind of take, you know, a few steps uh, to be, you know, supportive. Uh, and I know the city of Aurora is actually issuing some grants and so on and so forth. So we were Absolutely. kind of hand holding them a little bit, trying to actually kind of direct them to some of the, you know, federal assistance programs and the local assistance programs that are available for them to kind of take advantage of. But from our standpoint, for our tenants and so on and so forth, it's been more of a support system than anything else. Beautiful. Absolutely. Jeff, what about you, brother? How has uh, COVID-19 set you and your team back? Uh, my comments would be similar to Harish and Jay's. Uh, essentially, it creates the need to have the caution and the safety for everybody that's on site. But as far as the other trappings of it, it's essentially just a really complicated logistical issue. It's few, it throws some logistical wrenches into things because you're trying to get you know some specific part or something sourced. And it's kind of the odd things that you, you run into where it's become a problem. But at the end of the day, we don't anticipate much of an effect of it from it on uh, scheduling. It's just another challenge. And, and frankly, these I think everybody here would agree, these projects have plenty of challenges. So uh, we have to learn how to power through challenges. And I think everybody here can do that. Absolutely. And that's why you guys are continuing to, you, and that's why you guys are the rock stars, because when a bump comes in the road, you just, you smooth it out, you make it work, you go under it, around it, over it, however you need to get Get, you know, get it done to, to make sure your projects go forward. Crystal, has it affected, affected uh, Pacifica Square much, COVID-19? Uh, yes, actually, um, the construction-wise and the most of the under construction, especially the uh, uh, supermarket, it's getting slower because, and like everybody said, the logistic, and we have to be cautious about people working on site, limiting the numbers, and make sure they have a PPE. Um, and uh, was the um, especially for the restaurant and some of the um, the stores like uh, Gemini Massage and Jennifer Salon and Champagne Salon, like they already opened and then they kind of uh, restaurant and in the places we cannot be open until we have a further uh, notice from the uh, the Prisker, um our governor. Um, and so that is actually hurting the business. And uh, was you know uh, as well as in dog uh, beachful dogs and and chillax and all are ready to open and it just and, you know all has to be uh, close the door or waiting for uh, further notice and and the restaurant business are hurting like I'm, I mentioned before the hot pot is kind of like a sharing people gathering together and type of a family style meal and we cannot even offer the pickup and, and delivery so that's completely just open and had to shut down by march 17th um Vivi and does the same thing karaoke with a barbecue that hurting um our business and cannot have any delivery uh, however like and you jay mentioned that the city of aurora is very supportive and you know offer some on uh, the grants and found to our um tenants and i think some of them already got it so i really appreciate the city for that financial support absolutely absolutely mike and i'll, and I'll go to you to talk a little bit about how COVID not only affected your projects that you have ongoing, um, 80, uh, 80 South River, the Esser Lofts, and and uh, and uh, also uh, the Copley, but also maybe your restaurant. Talk about that a little bit because you got an, you got one that you just built a couple years ago, over on the west side, right? Yeah. So uh, briefly, um, you know, regarding the restaurants, it was a matter of it was a matter of um, of uh, changing the business model, right? And and uh, like Crystal said, it came on March seventh our biggest day of the year. Uh, and so we had just gone through a month of planning and we were, we were into the relapsing stage and we had to amp up right again to change our business model into a carry out and curbside. Uh, and so, but we did it. We have a great team as well. Uh, I get, like I mentioned earlier, my business partner, Ron, uh, is fantastic. Our managers are fantastic and, and we made it work. Um, now, sales are down tremendously you know I, and, and we're trying every day to learn how to build new business in that regard uh, but we're hoping 
that um, you know we get through this and and that we we move you know we move past it and uh, and get reopened back up again. And there'll be challenges and we'll face them and we'll we'll move forward. Uh, on the development side, I, I have to say, being blessed with construction partners that are as professional as they are uh, has made the, the transition for us very simple. And the fact that, um, you know, they're, they, they're, they're professionals at what they do and being able to manage their crews and their teams to keep everybody safe has made it simple on my end of things uh, to lease up the apartments, right? And so... So wait, let me be clear. Let me let me just just so everybody understand what you're saying. So, right in the middle of this pandemic, you guys are building the Esra Lofts, which is how many apartments? Twenty one. Twenty one. And right now, as we speak, there are people leasing these apartments and looking forward to moving in. So we're going to have fourteen units ready June first. Uh, we've already leased ten of them, and we're wow. anticipating to have all fourteen leased by the weekend. Uh, and then on the other side, the only delay, the only reason we haven't had those ready is the, 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 the delay in ordering the steel for the balconies um, because of limited production and supply chain issues. Um, but those will be ready by July 1st to 15th. And, um, and we fully anticipate that those will get uh, fully leased up uh, by that time as well. So in that regard, it's been nice to see the reaction of people wanting to come downtown Aurora and the excitement that they have in coming downtown. Um, so on the one end with the restaurants, it, it is nerve wracking and it's stressful. Um, and we're doing everything we can to stay afloat. Uh, and, and the city has been great in that regards. Um, but, and on the other end, you know, we're very excited to see the, the enthusiasm behind the re leasing up of the residential units. And let me, I'm, I'm going to come back to you, Russ, in a second. I just want to jump over to Jeff for a second, because I know you guys are looking as far as the Esser lofts to have your first uh, delivered in July. And Jeff, I think you guys were set for um, July, I'm sorry, June. You guys were set for July 1st, but now you're going to do sometime in August. So how is that process going to go as far as leasing those apartments? Mayor, what we usually do is uh, we pre-lease. So we would start a couple of months uh, before we anticipate loss being ready. We would start showing a model unit, invite people in, and it sounds similar to what Mike described for ESSER. So we anticipate following that same path and also anticipate that we won't have any problems leasing. I think this, uh, and I, I know also in Rockford, for reference, uh, similar to what Mike was saying there, it's been, uh, we're just opening up uh, the Talcott building is a 13 story. And that's just gotten redone and we are leasing about at the normal pace. So that wow. gives us optimism for uh, going forward. That we're going to come out of this thing. Okay. Cause at exactly. some point we're going to have, you know, a, a vaccine, we're going to come out of this and be even stronger. Russ, uh, you know, you, you are the guy that are at, is actually on site, especially at copy Copley. And I've visited you a couple of times at both Copley and 80 South. How has the whole coronavirus thing affected just uh, the people doing their jobs, morale, and you know the construction and the trades going on. Yes. Um, so obviously, in the beginning, everybody was very nervous. So not sure what to do. So we've been following the CDC guidelines. The uh, Carpenters Union actually has a hotline. So if, if there's any questions or any doubt, anyone can call them. An owner can call them. An employee can call them, and just try to understand what's the safest practice. So for us. We treat it like an OSHA regulation. If OSHA comes out with a regulation, you have to follow it. You don't have a choice. So whatever they say, that's what we try and do. Taking temperatures in the morning, making sure we provide masks and they have masks. Trying to social distance as much as possible. Sometimes it's in the construction, it's hard to do, but we try very hard to do it. And then you have the spectrum where guys are like, oh, nothing's gonna happen to me. And then you gotta watch that. Then you have the guys that are a little nervous and don't wanna come to work. So we're trying to find that medium to make everybody feel comfortable and just say, as long as we're safe and we follow the practices, we should be okay. And um, getting everybody on page, same page is gonna take a little bit, but it's working. So. Absolutely, glad to hear it. I, and I can tell it's working because I see development and building continually going on with, with all of you guys and everything that you're doing. You know, um, during my last uh, State of the City, I, I closed out by saying the Renaissance continues and the Renaissance is a rebirth. And you guys are absolutely part of the rebirth of the city of Aurora. Everybody on that screen that we're seeing are, is part of the rebirth 
of our city, whether it be at the near on 59 near the Fox Valley Mall, or whether in our downtown, or whether Copley, you know, on the east side of Aurora in District 131, you're part of the rebirth. Now, you know, Clayton, we got about 10 minutes left. I, do we have any questions from the audience that I don't want to leave anybody out if we've got any questions? We definitely do, and actually merges into your rebirth piece, Mayor. People are really looking uh, to see some some renderings, so we can show those as we talk about the rebirth. Um, let me back up here. We had a, a list, a whole lot of Wabanzi Valley warriors that started posting green and gold. <laughs> <laughs> warriors! <laughs> Wabanzi love that just came up on, on the thread really quickly with green and gold circles everywhere. Hey, does anybody want Russ and I to, to do the warrior bit, the warrior? The warrior no, fight? no, we don't. <laughs> Go ahead, Clayton. Go ahead. A consistent question is about uh, questions for me about pride and uh, you know what what do these look like? So maybe we, if we can merge your question on Renaissance, I think it can handle all these questions, um, and we can pull up some renderings that go right along with the um, the projects there. Okay. Please do. Um, you know, you want to pull something up? We can start yeah, with um, Crystal. We have to start with Copley there. Start. We'll start with Copley. We'll start with Copley. Pull up Copley. Now. All right, start talking about the, the Renaissance. All right. Now, talking about the Renaissance, man, and what we see here, Mike and, and, and Russ, um, the closest building that I see, which is the, um, is it the, was it 19, what, what building was the, te the teachers built? I'm sorry, the uh, one that'll be the uh, District 131 building. What year was that building built? 1957. 1957. And the building in the front right there, you know, facing the street, that'll be the pharmacy. That was the original hospital. What, when was that built? 1888. That's the original Aurora Hospital. And the, the larger, darker brown building over there to the uh, north, What when was that built? So that was built in 1916. And I, wow. I, I always like to point out, Mayor, that when that building was built, it was considered state-of-the-art across the country. And so we're excited to kind of bring that back to the area in the cutting-edge development that Russ and I are doing as far as merging the seniors with the adults with disabilities, uh, very excited for for this development. So I see there's a park there. What is what? Tell me a little bit about the park and the partnership with the um, park district in that park for that park. Russ, you want to go ahead? Yeah. So we joined joined forces with the uh, Fox Valley Park Districts, and we've donated uh, I think it's about 1.3 acres of land. Right. And uh, so Fox Valley Park District is. Uh, working with the state of Illinois for some funding, I believe, and we're gonna have a park there for everybody to enjoy you know, on the east side of Aurora, which in my opinion is is uh, uh, really needed. So and then we're also we're also shutting down seminary and there'll be a little park for the uh, students at Bardwell. So uh, that'll, be, that'll be nice for them, much needed. Man, that is gonna be a beautiful facility that has sat empty for 25 years, a quarter of a century. And for the um, school district, you're actually building a new structure out there. Russ, what's that, that new structure you're building? That's gonna be uh, their, uh, uh, their boardroom and it's gonna be also a training center for them. So okay. it'll be a nice big enough space for them to uh, do what they, they need to do, so. Absolutely. Next slide, Clay. And it starts over to Pacifica Square. Okay. Now, Pacifica Square, Crystal, this is absolutely beautiful. When you say Asian cool, that's absolutely cool. So tell a little bit about um, what we're looking at here as far as uh, the stores and what you plan on, the feeling you plan to get out there in uh, Pacifica. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, if you guys and you know been Aurora for that long, and you guys know about the Yorkshire Plaza, formerly known as Yorkshire Plaza, right now we call it Pacific Square. That the one you show um, earlier, that was the uh, twenty-eight thousand square feet of uh, golf smith. So like yeah. a big empty. Um, play. So we actually split into twelve different uh, units. So we bring in more smaller but more dynamic program into this area. So the uh, chillax and you know uh, close to the end of it, it's ready to open. 
Um, and we also have a home decor uh, showroom at the end of that stretch. And the corner, you see a taller massing here is a Korean um, barbecue, chicken barbecue. And then the next to it is a near salon and we have a, a liquor store next to it. And we also bring in some uh, smaller um, um, restaurant, you know, in the kind of like a snacks and in, in this area, pretty much we want to uh, re like revitalize uh, the revert the sorry I can can find a word like make this more area more um vibrant than before and just an empty war um facing a New York street and the here is our proposed uh, future faces which we want to um bring a more dynamic program like retail on the bottom and the uh, uh, residential on the top as everybody is uh, trying to do bring this mix of youth excuse me mix of youth a program in the area which we can have the interaction between the new and the existing retail absolutely and that building there is actually if you go out to the area there's a huge parking lot there's too much parking out there so that's going to be in the middle of the parking lot Yes, yep. you know, as we all know, back in the in 80s and when we designed all the strip mall, we always oversized all, with all the parking spaces. And based on our calculation and working with the building and the zoning, we make sure that even with the built um, development, we have enough parking for the um, retail customers and also for the residential uh, residents. All right, next slide, Clayton. Coming back downtown. All right. So. Oh, the Keystone Urban Equities. What's up, my brother, Jeff? Explain what we're looking at. All right. Uh, that's the Keystone. And in there, we will have 33 one-bedroom apartments on the second, third, and fourth floors. And the ground floor will retain those excellent retail spaces that are occupied by great tenants. So we are excited. It's looking good, brother. Now, it, not too long ago, go back to that picture one more time, Clay. Not too long ago, if you'd walk past this building, you'd see air conditioning units actually hanging out of the windows. <laughs> so that's not going to be the case in the future. Is that right? That's correct. Everybody <laughs> will have central air. So the air, the uh, window air units go away. Beautiful. Glad to hear it. Oh, man. Go ahead, Clay. All right. That's uh, terminal. Hey, man, go ahead. Lofts on Broadway, there's a handsome group of people. Oh, look at uh, that. <laughs> so that's a six story building and floors two through six will have a total of uh, 20 loft apartments, uh, walking distance to the train station, which is great. Uh, ground floor restaurants and obviously access to all the new great restaurants downtown. So, uh, and positioned as you mentioned before, kind of at the zero zero, kind of at the heart of the city. So exactly. Exactly. we're excited to uh, bring that building back to life. Absolutely. Go ahead, Clayton. Next one. Renaissance right down the block. Oh, now that there, um, that there is the uh, iconic, iconic building that is actually part of Aurora skyline. So, uh, uh, Harish, give us a little, uh, little background on what this is going to be. Absolutely. So this is going to be 31 high-end loft apartments, uh, uh, ranging from studios, one bedrooms, and two bedrooms across the second, third uh, floor of the uh, six and 12 North River, as well as the second, third and fourth of the hubs. So the hubs, especially if you notice, I mean, uh, uh, Aurora natives who, who pass by downtown uh, will remember the dome. So for everyone who's watching this, we wanna let you guys know that the dome will be restored to its uh, original, you know, uh, whatever it was, so its original state, we're gonna be restoring it. So Beautiful. the his history is still gonna be there. Uh, so yes, we are in conversations uh, with a couple of uh, high-end, uh, you know, retail tenants uh, in, in the restaurant uh, field. So we're hopeful that we're able to ink a deal over there. But uh, we're really excited about this project. Beautiful. Looks beautiful. Right, Go right. ahead, Clayton. We're uh, back down the street over here on 80 South River. 80 South River. A hey, um, Russ, tell us what's going on with the. Uh, or wait, wait. Who, who gave the last one? Mike, want to tell us what's going on with 80 South River, brother? Yeah, so Russ and his team are down there. Um, the first floor is going to be uh, commercial u uh, use. We uh, Kluber Architects is actually going to be uh, housed uh, or, or taking the space that's going to be along the river. We also have a dance studio and a photography free studio that's working. That'll be that'll be going in on the other side. Um, you'll see it from the top renderings. And also, we're working closely with a gentleman who owns uh, several grocery stores. Uh, to bring a grocery store 
uh, to the corner of that building. So we're very excited uh, about those possibilities. And then, uh, on, like I said, on the upper floors, we've already started leasing. Uh, coming June, coming June one, uh, it's going to be a busy day at the corner of Benton and uh, River. Uh, as there's going to be uh, ten individuals, uh, move, you know, m moving to to the downtown area, uh, ready to spend their money uh, uh, when the restaurants, uh, uh, when the restaurants and the entertainment district start to open up. Absolutely, it's beautiful. And I had I've, I've toured all these buildings and all these properties, and this is the closest to being ready to to be rented, so or leased, and it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, you know, you've got the riverfront, you got every, you got everything. You know, I just viewed, I walked through the terminal the other day as well as Keystone, and that's rolling. Yeah, I've, I've done tours of of uh, the Hobbs, um, you know, done tours of Copley as well as I've been out to Pacifica Square. And actually, we had our, our, a meeting out there before COVID happened at the um, barbecue karaoke, and we all sang. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> well, we tried. But, uh, you know, we're coming up on the end of this. And I just have to say, you know, before we sign off is I really appreciate you guys willingness to invest in Aurora. For so many years, we've talked about Aurora being on 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 that at that point, at that tipping point where if we had somebody take an interest in, in and invest money and bring the talent we need, that Aurora would go to, you know, you know, unforeseen heights and we'd go to a place, you know, that we'd never ever considered, you know, in this day and age. What you hear about what Aurora used to be, you know, in, in decades past, or this was like the the center of, you know, all the counties and all the, the areas. Folks from Chicago would come to Aurora. We've had presidents come to Aurora. We've had, you know, the the trains and uh, everything go through the city of Aurora. It was a centerpiece. We want to get back to that. And you guys are making sure that, that we get back to that and we capitalize on the things that that make us special. You know, the fact that, you know, as Jeff pointed out, we're in the perfect location. Location is everything. The fact that we have this, Harish pointed out, this beautiful river running through the middle of through the middle of our city. You know, the, the fact that we have so much infrastructure, as Mike and Russ have pointed out, that, you know, although it's been around for 100 years and some well more than 100 years for the buildings built in the you know, 1800s, that it's still strong construction that, you know, that, that stands the test of time and allows us to reuse it, you know, for something that, that's so much more beautiful, maybe even than the, the, the original use. But, you know, I, I wasn't there during the original use, but I can tell you that now it is, it is amazing and it's, and it's beautiful and I can't wait to see it come to fruition. And I just want to say, say that Aurora is open for business because of you guys, not because of the administration and me saying these words. They're open for business because you guys are here doing the business and you're attracting interest and in other business to the city. It's like a domino effect. You knock down that first domino, the rest will fall. And you guys were the first in, you know, first knocking down that dom domino. And we are seeing the, the, the effects, the positive effects of it. And even through the COVID crisis, which has seemed to shut down the world, you guys are still going forward, making it happen. So I really appreciate that. Aurora appreciate that. All, all of our 200,000 residents appreciate what you're willing to do for the city. And I'm looking forward to the successes and cutting some ribbons at the end of this summer, you know, into this fall, you know, and just making it happen. And whatever I can do as mayor to, to, to tout, you know, to sing your praises and to blow that horn and to get folks to come out to your establishments, believe me, I will definitely do. So thank you for joining me today on uh, our COVID conversation, and I appreciate it. We got Mike Pulikitis, we got, we got Russ Warm, we got Crystal Zane, we got Jeffrey or, or Duno, we got uh, my boy Harish and I do, who I'll say is go ahead and Anantha Pat Manabin, <laughs> and we got Jay Puna, Punakalu. So I appreciate you guys, and uh, hey, we're in this together. You know, Thank Roar you. Strong, you guys are making a Roar Strong. You Thank take you. it easy, and we're signing off. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, th